Alla funzione. I want it understood that I'm speaking today not only for myself, but for our commanding officer at the time, a good friend of mine, Captain Zeke Zartman, who has since deceased. I'd like to take you back to the spring of 1972. In early April, without warning, North Vietnam matched, matched a massive invasion of South Vietnam with no, no subterfuge. 8 May, we sailed north, and at about 2 o'clock in the morning on the 10th of May, we led two light cruisers and two destroyers into the Haiphong Harbor complex. A daring raid into strongly defended enemy territory. A specific reason was not given for the raid, nor would anyone say exactly how close the cruisers Newport News and Providence and the destroyers Robeson uh, uh, were, but they were close enough to bombard the coast just a couple of miles south of Haiphong. That's the Robeson and the Rowan. And the Robeson took shrapnel from a near miss, but there were no casualties and only minor damage. Two North Vietnamese torpedo boats made a long-range pass at the American ships, but one was blasted out of the water by the Newport News. The other was damaged by the Rowan and finished off by a Corsair jet. Until from that moment on the 10th of May to the end of November, her radio call sign was Thunder, and Thunder did. In that period of time, we fired 50,776 rounds of all ammunition. Of those, 28,295 were 8 inch. And then on October 1st, we got a bad round. And we had what I call an event. A round exploded in the center gun of turret two, blew back through the breach, and killed 20 members of our family. Within 36 hours, the Navy Weapons Center in Dahlgren, Virginia, had duplicated the event. They blew up a barrel just like ours and said with absolute certainty that it was a defective auxiliary nose detonating fuse. That there was absolutely no fault by any member of the gun crew nor of any member of the gunnery department that very carefully inspected every one of those rounds when it came aboard ship. So that's why I call it an event rather than an accident because nobody on board did anything wrong. We also medevac 37 men with various injuries, mostly from smoke inhalation. We we're fortunate to have a ready amphibious group nearby with a helicopter and a surgical team on board, which I think probably accounted for saving many of the lives of the people that we have back. This morning I had an opportunity to meet one of those men who got medevac. So I asked him and he told me that he got a medical discharge. And I said, and what did you do subsequently? He says, I spent 27 years as a firefighter. <laughs> so that tells you the kind of people that we have in Newport News. Ship's company, a tan hut, and salute.
Hello, I'm Jack Zender, a hospital corpsman on the Newport News. I serve on 72 and 73. I'd like to welcome you all to the memorial for those who were uh, killed in the turret explosion on October the 1st, 1972. We fought in many places. In our veins, the red blood flows. And the price we paid for freedom. Every press Ron Paul Bailey. And the battle scars we suffer. Seaman recruit Raymond Rance will Davis. never go away. That's why to me Seaman Terry Wayne will Deal. Veteran. You should walk this land with pride. You're the one who kept it free. Come join me at the side the rail. The souls of those who died will live forever. Hey guys! And you and Not me. forgotten. They must never be forgotten. <laughs> Bring hope to MIA. Till they are free. They will be. We'll see you on the other side, boys. Veterans Day. Thomas made third class. Charles Wayne Clenard. This is Dexter Goad. Please remember our 20 fallen shipmates 